rated M for mature. I remember when I was a kid, and uh, every kid loves dinosaurs. And you would always be like, you know, oh, I love a velociraptor, I love a brontosaurus, right? And you could have that chart where you could see the scale of all the dinosaurs, and you'd have the, that one poor guy who was like five foot nine standing there looking nervous next to the stegosaurus and the, you know, brachiosaurus and everything, and you have that sense of scale. And I think if you're creating a cool video game universe with monsters, you want to have everything from something that's knee high to him all the way to something that's, you know, 10 to 15 plus stories high and everything in between. <laughs> The initial backstory for the locusts was that they were these creatures that came in the night, ghost-like creatures, skeleton, and, and they would steal children. Uh, there's a myth and a legend in the world of Sarah of, of, that would scare their children that creatures come at night or the boogeyman will get you at night, he'll take the child if you, away if he's not good. Well, you know, over the history of the planet, that's ha been happening. You know, they've been taking children and stuff. And so what was a, a real event has become that sort of mythos of, of legend of, oh, the boogeyman's going to get you. In um, years two, um, we're going underground, and it was an opportunity to bring in some of these newer newer baddies, right? One of the key uh, changes that we have this time around, which actually affected how we balance the game, is the fact that the locusts have a lot more hit reactions. So when the player shoots a few bullets into a locust chest, the locust will actually react in a believable fashion and stumble. And when you have a big boomer coming at you with a butcher knife and he's running at you, and you shoot him and he, and he ducks his head and puts his shoulder into it and you're shooting into his arm, and he's still started running you know, against that fire hose, it feels really... Uh, uh, strong. I'd say the biggest thing is we, we have expanded our AI family by quite a bit. Uh, there's lots of different creature types and there's lots of new ways that the, the creature types interact with each other. Uh, for example, there's a new guy called the Cantus. They have the ability to uh, revive downed uh, teammates on their side. So if, uh, if you shoot down a locust but don't finish him, he can bring him back to life from across the battlefield. If you're in a fight with one of these Cantus guys, and you ignore him, uh, you're just fighting the front guys, they're just gonna keep coming back. And if you do enough damage to him, he'll actually spawn tickers to, to go after you and, and, dis and try to distract you while he does other things. I love the tickers. Uh, the tickers are my new favorite enemy. Uh, sort of like a moving, walking landmine. Tickers! Their whole purpose is kamikaze, so they just kind of scurry around and uh, hide until they see you, and then they'll just charge you, and, and once they get close to you, they kind of like, you know, flex their muscles on their back and blow up this bomb that's on their back, so. Brumac. <laughs> Giant monster with guns. That was the first creature I saw um, for Gears of War back when I started. He's seen multiple iterations. We have him in Gears 2 now where his armor is off. We've got versions with his armor on, he's got weapons, he doesn't have weapons. Talk about iconic creatures, you know. The Brumac is the epitome of every Gears of War creature there is. You know, everything else is derived from him. Blood mounts are really cool. One of the most difficult creatures that you'll encounter in the single player game. He's crazy, like, um, they kind of walk on their hands and they've got these crazy weapon feet. Um, they, they were, that was a tough character to evolve because of the, the mechanics of it. We came up with this idea to kind of have it where he's walking on his arms and his body kind of wraps up underneath and it's his, it's his feet that are kind of sticking out in the front that kind of jab you. He's a really bulky, like, cool looking character that the palace guards ride and um, he can, when he gets close to you, he's deadly. He's just, the melee attack is insane, and he just kicks at you with these sharp claws on his feet. And One of the cool things is you can shoot their helmet, and that'll get them all pissed off, and they'll actually rip their helmet off and then charge at you and stuff. So you can actually slow them down if you shoot them in the face, which, what doesn't actually slow down if you shoot them in the face anyway? Palace guards are um, specific to the Locust Palace. He's essentially a, a, a Theron, but a crazy, mental, <laughs> much more badass Theron. I think the one word that we do use most often and probably daily is badass. I think it's uh, my art director, Chris Perna, it's his favorite word. Right. Um, so he's got this crazy, shiny armor and stuff. He's highly visible, but he's highly deadly. Scourge is the new big bad, as we like to call them, in uh, Gears 2. And um, he's the locust higher up uh, kind of high priest kind of character. The locusts ultimately control a lot of the denizens of the hollow by using things like pheromones as well as certain verbal abilities. And the Cantus are the class of locusts that use this and he's essentially the leader of that cast. 
and uh, he's incredibly agile, and he wields a uh, burst pistol as well as a double-ended chainsaw staff, which is uh, very useful for doling out a lot of pain. Scourge is our ROM 2.0, um, although he's better than ROM. Um, I'd say Scourge probably lays awake at night thinking about ways to hack people apart and separate them and eviscerate them. Uh, Scourge, you'd eat ROM for breakfast, basically, yeah. I think if you were to compare uh, ROM to Scourge and use cars as an example, I think ROM would be the Humvee, where Scourge would be the Ducati bicycle. It's a steak versus foie gras. It's flip-flops versus boots. I can get going. <laughs>